Hey everyone, this is Tara Lynn from The Painted Cicada. Welcome, welcome. I am going to do a super fun and easy sunflower uh, mixed media demo today. I am super ready for autumn and sunflowers are one of those things that um, just bloom at the end of the summer and it's one of those things that just remind me that fall is coming and I absolutely love them. So that's what I am going to work on today. So welcome. Um, if you want a tracer that is available, um, it should be in the description. So uh, if you haven't snagged that yet, you can go ahead and snag that. Uh, the supply list is also in the description. Um, I've just got a few supplies and I'm going to be creating on a 9 by 12 uh, piece of mixed media paper. I've got some old torn book pages and uh, I've chosen a few different colors uh, for my sunflower of acrylic paint. So I've got two different shades of brown. I've got raw sienna and burnt sienna. Uh, I've got two different shades of yellow. I've got a yellow oxide and Hansa yellow. And then I've got gold and unbleached titanium, which is really just a cream color. Uh, you can use any colors of paint that you like. I might add in maybe some navy. Uh, I really, I'm not sure. I'm just going to play with this a little bit and see where it goes. I've also got some fluid medium. Uh, that's what I am going to use to get my pages, uh, my book pages glued on, and some water, paintbrush, paper towels, and that's pretty much it. And so let's jump right in. Um, I'm not going to draw my sunflower yet. I'm going to create some background and I'm going to start doing that uh, with my matte medium. I've got some fluid matte medium here. What I'm going to do is just tear up some of these book pages. I'm going to just kind of visually place some of this stuff on here. The pages that I've chosen are different thicknesses, kind of have different textures, so that'll play nicely. And I don't need to cover the entire background. I can leave some white space that is okay too and then I'm just gonna dip right into this matte medium and whenever you're using matte medium to adhere you want to use a coat underneath and then a coat over the top and that will make sure it gets sealed on uh, now matte medium if you're not familiar with it have not used it before is mostly used as an adhesive uh, but it's basically acrylic paint without pigment so it plays really nicely with acrylics but it makes a great adhesive Make sure, especially if you have any thicker pages, that you make sure that they're nice and coated. 
nice and saturated with that matte medium. I like to just kind of go back after I have everything laid down, I go back over and just make sure there's no wrinkles or bubbles. And then I want to immediately put my paintbrush in that water so that this um, matte medium does not dry on the brush and ruin my brush. Oops. Awesome. Okay, the next thing that I am going to do here is aside from making room on my desk area um, this needs kind of a second to dry it shouldn't take very long uh, and while that's air drying I am going to grab some of my unbleached titanium Now I like to use soft bodied paint, really any, any cream color is fine. Uh, and I am going to zap this with my heat gun just to make sure that it's dry for the sake of the video. Nobody wants to stare at me just waiting. to do is just do some scribbles and I think I am going to add some scribbles before I put my paint on um, and this is an optional step but I'm just going to grab a pen and then just kind of scribble some words on here And the idea here is most of this is going to get covered. It really doesn't matter what you put on there. Um, sometimes I just like it when the words peek through. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply this creamy color all over my page. I'm going to put it on and then I'm going to pull it back with a paper towel. So just get a nice thick coat on there. And then once this is covered, we are going to pull it back with the paper towel.
And that allows us to see some of that design through. And I want areas where it's pulled up a little more than others. Just play with it. There. Now I kind of like that look. I like to have bits and pieces popping through. Now since I used um, the paper towel to pull this back, it should be fairly dry quickly, but again, I'm gonna zap it with my heat gun so I can move forward. It's not a requirement for it to be dry to, to move on, but sometimes that just makes life a little easier. Um, now what I'm going to do is I am going to draw in my sunflower. So if you did not get the uh, tracer, that is absolutely fine. Uh, I'm just going to draw it in. And I'm just going to use a paint pen. I'm going to use a nice dark paint pen so that you can see it. But... Um, you can sketch with a pencil, a marker, whatever. We're gonna go over it with acrylic paint, so um, it really doesn't matter. Now for this first one, uh, I'm gonna draw, we're gonna start with a half circle here. And all plants are different, so don't feel like yours has to look just like mine. It absolutely does not. That's okay. Um, so just use mine as inspiration and kind of do your own thing. So here's the center of my sunflower and I'm going to draw some nice big curved petals coming out. And I can be sketchy with it because I've got paint to cover a lot of this up with, so. Now, I absolutely love sunflowers. I love um, just kind of their welcome to autumn. I, they're one of my favorite flowers. They always have been. Um, for those of you who know me in person, you know, one of my nicknames has been Sunny for a long time. Um, started out as Sunflower. All right, once I get my flower shape in there, I'm going to come back through. And I'm going to add more petals. These are going to be my greenery. Um, so I've got some nice big green leaves coming out of here. And once I'm satisfied with that one, I'm gonna draw a nice small one up here. So same idea, just a smaller shape.
right, so let's see. I'm going to get my, I know I pulled out a green. Here we go. I'm going to start with the green. I've got Viridian and green gold. I'm mostly going to use green gold. I'm going to use my Viridian just for a little shading. And I've just got a nice round brush here. And I am going to kind of tap in some Viridian down the center and maybe where there's some shadowing. Wipe that off and then go right into the green gold. Now when working with acrylics, it's always a good idea to do your, your farthest back layers first and then work your way forward. So these leaves are coming out from underneath and that's why I do them first. Once I get a nice first coat on there, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap in both of my green colors. I've got both on my brush here and I'm just going to come through and kind of just layer in a second coat. I'm a very abstract painter. I like things to be painterly and I like to be able to see those brush strokes. So if that's not you, feel free to kind of blend them out a little bit, but I enjoy that. Alright, so we are going to do kind of a similar technique using the yellows. I've got two yellows. One is more of a brownie yellow and the other is nice bright yellow. Use whatever you like. So what I'm going to do here is come in with a clean brush and for the sunflower that's got some layers to it, I'm going to do my background layer first by adding some of that dark golden yellow there. And then what I'm going to do is dip into two colors on my brush. I've got my dark and my bright yellow and I'm just going to kind of blend that out. Adding in some brush strokes. What I want here is just kind of a nice combination of the light and dark. And then for the upper petals, I am going to mostly come in with just my light yellow color. Now for most brands, um, yellow is fairly transparent and that has to do with the pigments. 
that they use to get yellow. So if you're having issues with transparency, um, just do two coats. So I know that this is going to be my first coat. I'm not too incredibly worried about it. I know I can see my outlines and such through there. Um, if you don't like to see this uh, and you really want a nice dark coat, you can always add a little white to your yellow. That helps with the um, opaqueness. But I kind of like being able to see through it. Um, so I'm going to put one coat down and then I'm going to come through um, and just add some brush strokes with uh, a second coat. So again, I'm going to come through and add some darker layers in here. So I've got my first layer of green, my first layer of yellow, and now I'm just going to go back through and I'm going to add a second layer of that green. And uh, don't be afraid to just try different things, add different smudges and colors. Now I'm coming through and just adding, I'm not uh, doing a complete second layer, but I'm just adding kind of some brush strokes, giving that leaf some dimension and shape. I might get just a little white to add to that yellow just to really brighten it up a little bit and add some opaqueness, opacity. Just coming through and putting a second layer, just some brush strokes on there, just kind of darkening up some of these layers. So I've got touches of different colors all over. And it's very abstract, it's very whimsical, not meant to be realistic at all. All right, now I'm gonna move into my centers of the sunflower. And for the centers, I'm using raw sienna and burnt sienna. And so I'm gonna get both of these colors on my palette. The first thing I'm going to do is just add a nice layer of that darker brown, the burnt sienna, on here.
Now, sunflowers have um, just a real, you know, in the center there they have uh, the sunflower seeds. So there's just a real kind of um, apparent texture. And so I am going to get, I think I'm going to use, I got a stencil brush, but you can always just use um, an old flat brush as well. And I'm, you can use black or like a navy blue. I'm going to use Prussian blue, which is like a, a black blue. What I'm going to do is get some on this brush. I'm going to offload it a bit. Um, and then I'm just going to tap this all around. And I'm going to do that for both. When I say offload it, I mean, you know, just tap off that brush so that there's hardly any paint on there. And that's what gives it the, um, the textured effect is that some, some of the brushes, some of the bristles on the brush have paint and some don't. So it just is kind of real splotchy. And then I can come back through and do the same thing. I'm going to move right into the burnt sienna, so the same color I started with. And I didn't clean off my brush, and so it really darkened that burnt sienna a little bit. All right, and then I can tap in my raw sienna, which is this light brown. Again, I'm going to offload it, and I really just want this to kind of be a highlight. So Just using this sparingly to tap in just a smidge of lighter color. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is get a nice thin brush. And I'm going to add some little sunflower viney wispies. So I'm going to tap my brush into my green. If you have a heavy bodied paint, you might want to thin it a little bit. Um, but now I'm just going to add some, some little curls. I'm going to come back through with my other green and just add some highlights to it. All 
right, so we're almost done. I'm going to add some finishing touches. So uh, I've got some gold paint here. I love gold paint. Um, I am actually just going to do some of the outline with this gold. So. Let's see. I'm going to clean out the brush that I had. And so I'm just going around the edges with this gold. And that will help to hide some of that um, painted outline when I did my sketch. And also add kind of a fun little detail. I love gold paint. I love working with metallic. And try not to worry too much about it being perfect. I think part of the charm sometimes is lines being a little more sketchy and playful. I know this is probably hard to see on camera, but as soon as I finish doing this outline, I will lift it and move it so you can see the reflection a little bit of these metallics, because they sure are pretty. I might even add just a few dots in there in the center just to brighten that up. So I know metallics don't show up well on camera, but it is a really pretty really pretty outline there. Um, okay, I am almost finished. Um, I'm debating whether or not to add a shadow around my sunflowers. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm going to use a Stabilo pencil. Um, if, and I'm going to use blue. If you don't have a Stabilo pencil, um, you can use a Faber-Castell Gelato. You can use a Coran d'Ache um, Neocolor 2. What else? Um, use Distress Crayons, react similarly. Anything that's water soluble. Uh, but first I need to make sure my paint is dry, so I'm gonna hit it with my heat gun. do is I am going to just scribble all around the edges with this blue. I'm going to say about a quarter of an inch off the edge all the way around.
And this does not have to be perfect because what I'm going to do is come back and activate this with water and smudge it out. So I really am just adding kind of a scribbly layer. And you could use black. I have a blue available. So I use my blue. Stabilo all pencils are my favorite. So I do have one in blue and black and white. I mostly use black. If you don't have a Stabilo pencil, I gave you some uh, similar substitutes, but you could also um, come back through and add charcoal and then smudge with your finger. That adds a similar effect, but I love my Stabilos. They are a mixed media staple for me. All right, so I added my outline all around my sunflower. And the next thing I'm gonna do is activate it. And so I've got a Q-tip and I'm not gonna use my paint water cause it's kind of dirty, um, but I'm just gonna wet this Q-tip and then come through. And I'm gonna start activating this. And then once I have it partially activated, I'm going to pull out my matte medium again. And I use this to go back over and seal it. So I just dip in my matte medium. And because this is water soluble and fluid, I can kind of seal it and blend it out all at the same time. So I do kind of blend that blue out even more. And so when this matte medium dries, it will be sealed and it won't smudge anymore. So I do like to pull out that color a little bit.
And I really like kind of the halo effect it gives. And I was kind of, uh, when I was, you know, I don't pre-plan too much, but when I was thinking about what design I wanted to do, I knew I wanted sunflowers on a mixed media background. And I couldn't decide if I wanted my background to kind of stay with that neutral or if I wanted it to be navy. And so this is kind of a nice, I think this is kind of a nice compromise between the two. I really like it. I like how this turned out. Um, of course, you can change up the colors, you can change up the placement of the sunflowers, um, make it your own, have fun with it, but I hope that you will share it with me. Uh, you can tag me on social media, at Painted Cicada, uh, or you can join me in my, my Facebook group, which is Painted Cicada Art and Share. Um, I would love to see it, and... Thank you so much for joining me, taking time out of your day to make art with me, um, and I hope that you'll join me next time. Bye, everybody.